Hey, hey everyone. Um, welcome to this after church tea time. We're very happy to uh, be with you today. And um, yeah, to, um, to talk about this sermon and the service about the like, Twin Flame Union, the end of all patterns. Um, sermon done by Adam and Brianne. Um, timely, as always, uh, packed full of insights for everyone, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so I'm Noreen, and um, I'm a member of Twin Frames Universe Community, Church of Union, and I'm accompanied with um, Gabby and Carmen today. <laughs> so yeah, we are going to start um, by, I think, feeling our feelings. And um, how did you feel about this sermon? What were the feelings coming up? So, yeah, for me, there was a lot of peace in there and um, so much harmony was conveyed through what they shared in their sermon. And um, yeah, I just also feel a lot of curiosity even more um, for the Twin Flame journey and what we're moving through each and every day, because it's, it's something in a way so new and at the same time something that is always there like it's our natural state of being to be uh, with our twin flame and to feel it in our heart to be with God but it's it's in a way so new having it still so new having it in the physical working through the blocks to um, manifest that and just see also what they shared about their union it's like something i'm working through in my union as well it's so interesting how the dynamic is also working and yeah what patterns show up and that you never really real, really realized what patterns you were holding on to in past relationships and now relearning the process of what it means to have a divine union and to really experience that and yeah, it was just so peaceful. And yeah, I really love that. Yeah, I felt a lot of the same, just very peaceful energy throughout the, the sermon. And I was laughing at several points because it's like my entire adult life. I feel like I've been healing the same things <laughs> just over and over again and like all different kinds of like ways and avenues, but it comes back to like, there's always patterns that we're unaware of. And as we heal the patterns that come into our awareness, we go deeper and there are other patterns that are then able to come up into our awareness and that it's like this very peaceful process of just healing through whatever is in your awareness at that time. And then like just moving forward peacefully and accepting whatever comes up, like, especially as it relates to like patterns from childhood and patterns from past relationships. And I feel like it doesn't matter <laughs> like what I heal through. Not that it doesn't matter, but I mean, like it's, there's not this frustration that I used to feel a lot of at the beginning of my journey of just like, Oh, I've already looked at this. Oh, I've already healed this. You know, it's because like, as we go deeper in the work and like expand our awareness and expand our love and grow we're able to then become aware of things that were previously like unavailable to us to heal <laughs> because we weren't there yet. Right. So just like, yeah, I felt that deep sense of peace of like, whatever is coming up for me right now is perfect for what I'm going through right now. And that feels very good to me. I have to agree. Um, 
I felt this deep sense of peace as well, but also um, I'm feeling big, big blocks regarding my relationships. And so I was in upheaval at the same time. <laughs> right? So I'm going back and forth uh, between like this upheaval state and this peace. And I feel listening to the sermon, closing my eyes and just taking it all in was very, um, very comforting for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm curious to know, like we touched a little bit, you both touched a little bit about um, how it um, pertained to your, to your journey right now, but I'm curious to know, like what lesson does it um, directly bring for you um, right now? Because for me, uh, I was, um, I guess this week with my coach, Michaela, I was kind of feeling <clears throat> I was kind of feeling like this um, tension in my, un in my union and uh, this block and I felt like this frustration of like banging my head against the wall <laughs> and uh, not getting forward and it made me realize that for most of the journey, maybe I was playing out this pattern that um, Brianne was talking about, about keeping the peace. And I didn't know um, how I was playing it, um, especially because I, I value honesty very much. So I was like, I need to be honest with myself. Like there are some things like, in my twin flame that people think normal or enjoy and I see I see a trigger it's not anything personal it doesn't mean that I don't love him it's just that I'm triggered and I'm, I have the right to feel different but people uh, feel different about it because this is my twin flame and I have to heal um, for our union to to grow deeper and I realized that yeah, maybe I got swayed by the external expectations and uh, didn't really take the time to feel. Um, I took the time to feel in all parts of my life, except for this one. And uh, I really have to sit with myself and, and say, okay, like, it's not even that I didn't bring my twin flame uh, in my heart, like that I didn't feel about it. it. I didn't bring anything. So I didn't bring God either in that part. So there is this work of like awakening this gently. And I realized that, yeah, maybe um, I was, there was a whole universe of things to feel with God. And I wasn't attaining because I thought like, oh, maybe this is not the right time. Or maybe it's not the way it's supposed to be done. Um, and uh, just allowing myself to, to feel these things. It's like very peaceful, also very intense. <laughs> it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, feeling more complete, I'd say inside myself. Um, I'm still going deeper with it. Um, <laughs> if you have any comments about it, like feel free to comment and uh, feel free to share like um, what lessons are you directly um, having um, pertaining to the sermon? Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, I'm learning right now that it's safe to speak up, even when your voice is shaking. And I was also moving through a very similar blo uh, block, what Brienne was sharing as well. It's like, um, so my, my twin flame person, let's say twin flame person and I had a conversation and we came to um, an argument within it. 
And so we concluded with, okay, let's feel our feelings here. I was feeling my feelings moving through it. And we ended the call in peace. But somehow after that call, something changed within our union. And it was like, mm, there was something really icky about it. And really like, let's say shitty. <laughs> And so I realized, okay, okay, it's within myself. I can't go outside of myself and try to fix it here. And I was also like, yeah, afraid to do that. And so I went within and had to sit like two days, even really with this feeling, with this, what is it now? What's bringing me uncomfort here? And it was about that he was not, um, it felt like he was not responding the same way uh, on WhatsApp, for example, that he did before. But it was just something playing out in my mind. Of course, there was something feeling off because of our conversation that we had before and the disagreement in some points. Mm. But in a way, I realized my mind was telling me, um, yeah, he's not the one anymore. I had so many false twin flame experiences that at some point I was like, oh, as soon as there is a disagreement, I try to convince myself, oh, he, he's not the one, right? But instead of like putting a directly a stamp on it, I had to really sit down and feel all those intense feelings. Why do I think that? Is there a really, is there a real reason for it? Or is it just fear telling me to maybe leave and maybe even break up? And so I had to really sit with this and really sometimes it was not really clear why I was afraid in here or what was it that gave me this discomfort but it just had to sit with the feelings deep breathings and be honest with myself and so after I came to a conclusion I, I felt a I felt this peace in my heart and I was like okay it felt like something was telling me you know what, it could be he's not the one because I healed it within myself. I felt at peace, I felt love, but somehow he was not responding anyway. And so I was like, I had an expectation. As soon as you heal, he has to respond. He has to be there, but that's not true. Not necessarily. So I had to release expectations here and then uh, saw that I actually should reach out and talk to him about how I feel right now. And even though I was still like, oh, Normally, I wouldn't do that with anyone. Or usually, when I um, opened up about it with in previous relationships, um, people would uh, disappear, or they would they can't handle me and just went away. But I, but it felt like yeah, that's the next step. I have to open up here. I have to share, and so I did, and it actually turned out very well. This was my missing piece in seeing that he's still here with me and these, that he's still committed to me. And um, I thought in a way, even he is going to leave me, even though I felt parts within that I wanted to leave him because I was so afraid of this, of this intimacy in a way and uh, being so vulnerable with someone. And yeah, he just met me there. He aligned with me there. And after we spoke about it, I feel such a deep peace now such a relief in our union it's like it feels like ah oh, I gave it room I gave it space and I allowed God to be my number one in this place as well and to be there for myself first and yeah that's something I'm just learning deeper again putting God first of course but also listening to my intuition and feeling into it is it my intuition is it really God talking to me right now I should open up and then this tiny little differentiations between um, yeah, this good feeling of following your intuition, which is sometimes so, so um, it's not loud, but what's the difference of it? The, the opposite of it, it's um, silent or more, not, yeah, more silent. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet, yeah, thank you. It's sometimes more quiet than the voice of fear and really, um, sitting with it and feeling into it. What is it here right now? Yeah, and releasing expectations. And uh, yeah, whenever there is another, there are so many lessons, <laughs> but whenever there is a, a disagreement or an upset or a conflict within a union, 
then it doesn't have to mean anything. It's just a matter of going deeper here and not giving it power and just seeing as, uh, it as an opportunity to go just deeper into love and really finding the truth, being curious about finding the truth and seeing that it's all fine and it's, it's part of life to have upsets, to um, encounter them and knowing and having faith in the really dark times that you will um, reach the other side. You will feel deeper peace and love in your life and in your union. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, what was coming up for me was a lot of the same as far as the peacekeeping and really transitioning from old patterns of not speaking up for myself and moving into like my power and my peace there of when I have a peace expressing it and not just thinking, oh, it doesn't matter or like it's just going to cause a fight. <laughs> right. Um, but that for me has been popping up all over the place in my life, whether it's at work, um, when like people are not getting along and like facilitating that, like collaboration, you know, or just within my home, like with my parenting or, um, in my relationship, They've just been like all kind of pointing to the same like peacekeeping pattern of like, you know, it's important that everyone is able to speak to their own experience and for like space to be made to actually come to a place of peace instead of this like misaligned belief that like peacekeeping is just like healing through your own peace. And that's all that happens. Right. So being able to, yes, heal through your own pieces, but also like <laughs> to recognize when there's like a piece for the community, right. A piece to be shared for healing and to bring people closer instead of pulling them further apart. So that was like really powerful for me in the sermon of just that key difference between what exactly is divine peacekeeping, right? What is divine peace and what is just this old pattern that we all, you know, not, maybe we all didn't grow up with, but I for sure did of just like speaking up for oneself was treated as a challenge to authority or like a challenge to another person or a conflict of some kind when it never was and never <laughs> should have been like it's just an area that has been very misunderstood for a long time I think as far as like what peace truly is and what it means and how it facilitates like making any relationship in your life more peaceful and grounded so that's been something that I've been healing through and really stepping into as far as like creating a life that's based in God, that is based in peace. Like those are, no matter how small the situation seems, like they're all a part of expanding that peace. And it's so important to like recognize you have an opportunity to deepen the peace in your life. Every time one of these challenges or upsets come into your life. Um, it's so beautiful what you both shared. And I think you both touched on something very important, put in your own words. Um, I have been in, I'm in the same situation as Carmen when I feel like, uh, I've been hurt by uh, false twin things and uh, maybe I should run away. Is the reason that, that sign, <laughs> that physical sign <laughs> of healing. Um, and also I've, I've grown up in a household um, which I'm feeling the patterns of right now where 
it was very much a sign of disrespect to have a child, uh, to be a child and have opinions, basically to be a human being. But there is a lot of um, emphasis put on the respect of the elders, even though the elders were wrong and even though it was a bit abusive. And I think we are all, we are all healing bad in some way. Um, and that's why the healing of Jeff and Shalia these past few weeks were also on, um, on family and not just twin flame and not just like sexual trauma. And what I feel about the peacekeeping is that let's always, um, let's always put the situation um, in a place where you're having the interaction of a relationship with God. Because in truth, you are always having a, a relationship with God. And uh, you realize that you are allowed to be upset. Um, doesn't mean that God doesn't love you or that we don't love God. And uh, we are allowed to have a discussion uh, about it. We are allowed to heal. We are allowed to feel peace and comfort. We are allowed to know um, that this is the safest container and that God would never leave. And, uh, By feeling that, I think you become fearless of, of anyone running away uh, in your life, of every hurt and upset that you've experienced in your relationships. And you even um, become unattached to any expectations because you know there is a mirror to something where you had to go deeper with God inside. Um, and uh, that's the truth of uh, transcendent love that Adam and Brian were talking about calling Jeff um, in Tifas. And yeah, it's so, yeah, I think that's why this sermon brings so much uh, peace because um, you know, we talk about twin flame, but like we're seeing it more through the eyes of God. We are seeing that um, maybe the things that we learn were illogical and irrelevant uh, in the eyes of God. Um, what do you mean, like when you have a fight, you, <laughs> you leave the <a> relationship? <laughs> I, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> you stay and you communicate and you deepen the love. And uh, doesn't that feel more safe, like more relieving? Um, I think almost cushioning, like you have a safety blanket <laughs> in, with your relationship with God. And um, what a beautiful foundation um, and compass for your love. Um, in this reality for your love with your twin flame. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel like it's so nice to know that you, um, that it's always in your own hands, that you have the power to choose every, uh, to heal everything and you have the power of choice and knowing and trusting yourself that you will always make that choice to heal and to go deeper is like the greatest gift that you can give to yourself like committing to yourself and in feeling into it committing to yourself means you're committing to god you're committing to your union to your twin flame and there is that's so powerful it makes you unstoppable and in fact you are and you have everything that you need on this journey and 
Also, another thing that I really loved uh, that they were talking about is this thing. I guess we all had this feeling when you first met a false twin flame or someone you thought is your twin flame or really your twin flame. I guess we all had this in intense awakening. I'm not sure if really everyone had it, but it's really like I can I can speak for myself. It was also like intense, like really crazy and i i thought i'm crazy myself like okay what's happening here i was not really spiritual beforehand and now you see all the signs and boah, this there's just this intensity right and yeah i'm really crazy and you think really you 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 now think oh okay this is how the love should always feel like but when i feel now into how i felt at this time this this excitement in a way was so fear-based it's like so ungrounded and whoa in a way you you don't want that all the time because you feel like you're shaking in perfect union sure you have that like grounded and stable but in the beginning it feels so whoa. and then you think oh okay this is how it should always feel like but that's so not true so for example as i was moving off the false twin flames healing through it revealing them and then manifesting another one <laughs> and so on <laughs> um with my twin flame person now i realized when we came together it was so peaceful in a way i was even questioning like wait is that normal that it feels so peaceful shouldn't there be some sparkles and some woo woo signs or but when I felt into it, it was like, oh, actually, that is so comforting. It feels so safe. It feels so natural. I'm in a way surprised, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, that's normal. It's like normal having water. It's like normal to take a breath. It's just normal having skin, having eyes, whatever. It's, it's so normal. And this feels so comforting. And through everything that I've been through, I can say like, I would go through it again, just to have this comforting peace, the safety within myself and knowing that I would heal anything, I would do anything for God, for myself to feel good. And yeah, that is really priceless. And I just love that it's really meant to feel peaceful. And sure, you will have the highs as well, but they have a purpose and you don't feel ungrounded anymore and it's so wonderful and valuable to have that peace to feel so grounded and so stable in your life yeah you're transcending all the areas in your life and then this can be a long way but it's so worth it Yeah, I really like that they pointed out the difference in that energy because I definitely like went through that in my own life of like being really attached to a certain person because of like that just like catalyst experience that Adam was talking about of just like, wow, like starry eyed and this is my person and like everything is so great. But like that completely distracted me from like all of the places where it wasn't peaceful because I was so invested in this amazing, incredible feeling that I'd never felt for anyone before. And like, that's all I could really see. So when things started popping up that should have been like clear indicators that this was like destined for failure. Like I just kind of pushed them off or like made excuses and accepted them and like ended up in like a seven year relationship that I just like kept fighting for and fighting for and fighting for because I truly believe like that's my person. Like I've never felt this way before. And I just kept like taking my lumps and kept going. And, you know, <laughs> seven years later, I was like, wow, like this is definitely not my person. <laughs> like, <laughs> but at that point, like I was like, holy shit, like, holy shit. <laughs> 
And it's like, the longer it goes on, the more you're unwilling to admit to yourself that you're wrong. You know, like, you're like, no, like I've invested in this. I'm like fully committed to seeing this through and whatever. But because of that attachment, you're not actually able to see the truth and to be able to see that it's not peaceful, that it's just these highs and lows. And even if like that person was a catalyst and like woke you up to this entirely different world that you are now experiencing that like all of the other things matter too. <laughs> like, is that relationship centered in God? Is it centered in peace? Is it deepening your relationship with God? Because if those answers aren't yes, it doesn't really matter. Like <laughs> what heart blew me feeling you're feeling, right? Like, at the end of the day, it's about God. And if it's not bringing you closer to God, it's not your twin flame. It's not like that perfect relationship that's meant for you because that relationship is always going to lead you back to God and always going to be rooted in peace. This attachment, it's so important that we talk about it because so many people uh feel that it all should be so intense all the time. Um, now I'm not aware of it. It's like ebb and flow and ups and downs. And, and there's a time to feel all of these feelings and you cannot feel, um, you cannot control that. Um, you, definitely also cannot be attached to, to a person uh, for the feeling. Um, you know, when Briad said like, that she had this feeling and that she went after the person thinking it has to be them. Um, yeah, it's um, totally missing the point of like, this is a relationship with God. And we, we've all gone through that because we didn't know it's okay. Uh, but I feel it's just so good that this information is out and that she asked this question to God because um, as we are going deeper into what normal relationships truly are, uh, people are gonna need this to see um, how is this relationship good for me? Um, how does this work? Is this my perfect person? And um, it perfectly links to Shalia talking about um, attracting the divine masculine and saying that, yeah, I, I relate to her when she said that she had exes and, um, they didn't respect her or she was bored with them. Um, was this contradiction of like being committed too quickly um, and giving away everything too quickly and uh, also being bored because a person didn't give anything to the relationship and we had to fight, fight for the relationship to stay alive. and. Uh, Fighting is not the way, like we learn here. <laughs> it's just for peace. It's incredible how we can get together, get closer because of peace. And uh, as Carmen said, it's very valuable. I don't think we realize how valuable it is to, how much of a gift it is um, to come together like that. And, uh, I definitely wholeheartedly agree with her when she says that uh, if it's not living on the edge, it's not worth it. Because what's the point of having a relationship where you don't grow and you don't get closer to God, where the, the person doesn't help you achieve your dreams and your deepest desires? Um, it should be the normal, like the basis for everyone. And uh, yeah. 
it, it gave me so much relief like oh okay so i was not like a very hard person <laughs> choosing my relationship and filtering through them and dumping people because i was bored a few weeks afterwards <laughs> It was truly really, like it's meant to be. Like, it's meant to be that way. <laughs> I mean, what's the fun if you're not like challenging yourself, living on the edge? Like obviously, like not through pain, but like what an adventure <laughs> to be with someone who who can now uh, challenge you to be closer to God over and over again. Yeah, I love the part you broke up about brought up about like the challenge itself, because like <laughs> that was like a very bubble bursting <laughs> like comment made in passing. That's just like it is kind of about the challenge. Like I think some people conceptualize like, you know, this twin flame relationship that's just peaceful and calm all the time but what it actually looks like is like bursting bubbles constantly of just like no that's not reality like <laughs> you know you push it all against each other you challenge like misaligned beliefs that you've had you step out of your comfort zone constantly and like rise to meet challenges that you didn't even know you were facing until like <laughs> you had someone there like, hey, have you taken a look at this yet? Like, <laughs> right? And it does like, if you're afraid of conflict, if you're afraid of challenge, if you're afraid that like, you know, you have to keep that peace, then you're not going to grow in the way that you have to in order to deepen a truly divine relationship because there's going to be conflict and challenge and it's about relearning how to navigate that and <laughs> rising to the challenge, right? Like <laughs> it, it can feel like really challenging sometimes. And that's part of the process of just healing through it and understanding that you're safe, right? You're always safe with God. He's never going to leave you in a direction that's going to disembowel you and leave you like helpless, right? You have, you have God. <laughs> you are safe to face all of your challenges. And at the end of the day, there's just greater peace waiting for you. You can have the challenges and still experience the greatest of that you've ever experienced. I think people think it's contrary, but there are opposites, but actually not, not with your twin game. Yeah, I love that. And it's also at some point, um, it makes fun to encounter challenges. Sometimes I when I, when I feel like, oh my God, this is really challenging right now. Before I give it power or something, I'm realizing it, oh, that's a challenge. And something within me is actually like, oh my God, yes, I'm going deeper into love here. Okay, challenge me. Because I feel so, oh, when someone is challenging me, I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> I love it, actually. <laughs> Even though sometimes I know, yeah, there are times when it's so challenging, you be on your couch like, <laughs> life is so hard <laughs> there's still always this little spark in my heart being like yes i'm moving through it <laughs> it's so nice and so empowering and yeah it's so rewarding really oh i love it and um it reminded me of a class actually um that i was watching maybe it was wednesday seven class 44 I'm not sure i can check it out if you want, I have it somewhere. But um, in this class, they're going in, um, they're doing deep inner work. And they, um, so in the end, before they encounter like the core of an upset, um, Jeff is uh, leading, I guess it's Fabian in this class, in this uh, specific frame um, into it, kind of like a meditative state 
where you imagine like um, you get a holy armor from God. And I love that. Uh, I love that piece that he gave him because it's like, yeah, you have always, no matter what you're going through, you always have the safety and just sitting before you go into very, very deep upset or all the upsets are kind of like the same. I know sometimes they feel more intense or not, but in the end, they're all the same. And when you, when you feel like, oh, there's something really within me that is, that's out of this world, right? And it's challenging to face it. Then just taking this uh, deep breath in your heart and just grounding first into peace before you go into the fear, before you look at the fear, whatever is screaming within you, right? And so this image of um, receiving this holy armor really helped me. I always see like this divine golden armor, like a vest and like what knights have, right? And it's so shiny and so powerful. And as I was really receiving it, like almost in a video game, you know, when you find something on your way and there is something like shining and you pick it up in your inventory and now you have it, like it's yours. <laughs> That's how I see it. Then I feel so empowered, like, yeah, you are this light. And then with this piece, you can actually feel like going deeper within yourself, like even, even physically deeper and face whatever is there. And then it feels so much lighter to bring the light into this space. And it makes me, it reminds me also, yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're doing it with God and he's always there, but it's good to remind yourself or ask him, can you remind me? that you are there because yeah, sometimes we forget. That's why we experience that, right? And I just love that piece, had to share. It's so funny because when you started talking, I felt warrior of love. And <laughs> then you mentioned the, the golden uh, armor. It's so funny. And uh, I loved uh, the video game analogy as well i uh, realized that um you know the intermediary steps to the next level give me as much joy if not more sometimes at going to the next level and it's now uh, in that way that you understand that it's the journey that counts not any form of result, uh, because uh, the journey, the steps, um, are a testament to that transcendent love that you feel with God. <clears throat> and uh, another thing that I wanted to mention was actually uh, Christy and the, and the cards that she pulled. Um, notice that there was no, absolutely no separation between her talking of um, her twin flame and her other relationships and God. Um, that's something that really I observed while she was talking. And I was like, yeah, it's so natural, so beautiful. Um, that you're always experiencing God, uh, always experiencing this oneness. And it looks different um depending on the things that we're experiencing in this life but it's because this life is made to to have fun to have joy to experience various things but the core is always the same and uh yeah and it's like uh, again going to reinforce that foundation of love Yeah, that foundation, <laughs> that foundation, man. <laughs> As Carmen was talking about like the armor and like how that that piece, that God is your protection, right? Like the scene playing out in my mind was just like this huge fire breathing dragon, right? And that's like the conflict or the argument. That's that huge fire breathing dragon that you just walked into. And like feeling how you feel in God's armor, right? When you're approaching that situation from a place of peace, 
with God with you right there, right? That feeling is like, oh, I can conquer this dragon, right? But like conversely, (laughs) if you go into that conflict or if you go into that argument and like you walk into a huge fire breathing dragon, but you are not in peace and you do not have God in that situation with you, like you're essentially naked. So you're standing there in front of a fire breathing dragon, like cowering naked, like is that really how you want to fight that battle? <laughs> like, is that really how you would like to approach that conflict? Because I promise you, it's not going to go well. <laughs> like, that's the difference between like approaching the situation in your life from a place of God, a place of God as your foundation in that peace, that armor, right? That's the difference. How are you going to choose to like embrace the challenges in your life? Are you going to find your peace and stay in that like armored, protected, like being with God in each moment? Or are you trying to run around, fight battles naked? Like what what are we choosing here? (laughs) Like, (laughs) just don't be surprised when you find yourself in the same battle over and over again. Because you can't find that shiny armor. (laughs) Like, it's just how it goes, right? So, like, don't run away from the challenge. Just arm yourself with God. (laughs) Find your peace. And then you're ready to face the box. You're ready to face the challenges, right? You don't have to run away from them then. (laughs) That's why the intermediary steps in the video games are very important. Otherwise, you're never going to defeat the boss, never going to go to the next level, and uh, you're going to get frustrated. And <laughs> it's not going to do anyone any good. And was this in like a recent YouTube video, Jeff was talking about like that very uh, long supermarket ale, uh, and you had a shopping cart, and when you were like doing groceries with God, I guess. I was like, you might want to, um, you know, add some tomato sauce just for the world, or maybe that, or, and that as well. And you, you are like, I don't know how this has anything to do with where I want to be. <laughs> the next level, but I want the next ale, like the getting out of the supermarket. I was just here for bread. <laughs> and uh, yeah. It was like, yeah, God is saying, you'll see, you'll see. And also you are having joy. You are having that conversation with God uh, all the while. So it's not as if you, you are alone. There's no, there's no reason to be upset for that journey. Um, are you going to do the intermediary steps in a, in a joyful state? Or... Or are you going to be like all the way to the finish line? And um, yeah, it's great that it's great that we're, we're going deeper into um, our relationship with God just from talking in this discussion. That's nice. So how do you feel right now? We're nearing the end. Um, we still have like a few minutes. Do you feel complete or would you like to add something to the discussion? I feel pretty complete. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so yeah all right so um thank you so much for well, such a short tea time we went very deep um i am super grateful that we got to deepening um the lessons that we had on this sermon thank you for everyone who watched us live thank you for everyone who is watching us from 
our YouTube channel, uh, Church of Union. And uh, if you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, so you don't miss uh, the services. You have to church to time and you have a discussion that, that we have in here. And uh, thank you for your support and have a good rest of your Sunday. Namaste. Bye-bye.